Oh, thank you for your time today. It's really appreciated. Um, if I start this talk by saying we're going to discuss the public records of Queensland for the next five minutes, those still awake would probably envisage dusty tomes and endless boxes filled with forms. However, the reality is that the collection at Queensland State Archives is a rich, untapped legacy spanning 2.4 million records and 64 kilometers in physical form. A wealth of treasures and secrets we desperately want to share with the potential to inspire, educate, and entertain. Yet sadly, the stories of our collection are still largely unknown. So what is this problem? The reality is various factors impact on our ability to share these stories in a meaningful way. For example, our location at Runcorn presents a physical barrier, greatly restricting access, not only for those living in Brisbane, but more importantly, for those who live further afield. We've tried to reach out and connect. However, our website and supporting social media channels deliver a fragmented experience of this content, and QSA is unable to present related documents, images, and in some case films, in a coherent and dynamic manner. This problem is further exacerbated as we're only able to provide online access to a tiny percentage of the records we have via our catalog and our online image library. For example, uh, one of my favorite stories is the Gatton murders, a horrifying crime, I'll admit that much, but an iconic mystery of Queensland folklore occurred on Boxing Day in 1898, and we're very lucky to have the original files of the police investigation, about 10, which includes, sorry, 10 fascinating boxes of correspondence from across the globe. These, all these boxes share the same title, tarot readers, astrologers, and psychics. Inside them is a veritable Pandora's box of theories and speculation regarding the true identity of the murderer. Faces are sketched in charcoal. Detailed dreams are offered as proof that they know who did it. And we even have uh, swatches of fabric sent from the US and the UK. Currently, we share that as one Facebook post at a time. Brilliant. So we're unable to find a platform where a variety of records relating to a topic can be curated to present a storytelling experience for our customers. We currently find ourselves telling stories in isolation, sharing our collection in glimpses and snapshots. So, unsurprisingly for you, I'm sure, between 2015 and 2016, we achieved just over 100,000 accesses to our collection from the public, both physical and virtual. Now, we wanted to do better, and as an organization, we deliberately shifted our focus away from the record and towards the stories they held. So far, the result for us since July 2016 is we've achieved just around a million accesses to our collection. So we know that there's an audience wanting to hear our stories, yet we now need to push on and realize a platform that will enable us to showcase all the tales in our collection. We want to create a space, a central location, if you will, that can evolve over time, is functional via different devices, and accessible to those living in rural and remote parts of Queensland. We want to provide a dynamic space that offers a meaningful and deep engagement with our collection, uh, and we want our collection to be one that allows Queenslanders to discover, engage, and add their own stories about the heritage of Queensland, and what it means to be a Queenslander. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. That's a fantastic problem. So I'm sure there's heaps of uh, suggestions and heaps of questions out there in the audience. One down the front already. Our friends from QPS probably still have us a cold case, do we? Hi, I'm Morgan from Guy of Resources. Um, you list there, add your own stories about the heritage of Queensland. Um, how important is that compared to QSA being able to publish their own curated stories? For me, uh, of course, as an organisation, we're very much used to forcing or pushing one narrative, one story. And we want to be a conversation. We want to be part of the community, 
not dictating what people need to understand about our collection. So the opportunity to share and for people to, for example, Expo 88, which we have a vast collection of film and beautiful photographs, always elicits a response. People want to tell us about the time they went on the monorail or the time they went into one of the um, exhibitions, and we want those memories. That's as rich to us as the government record itself. So yeah, we, we would want a platform that allows us to draw on those memories and share them. Other questions? No, I think that's it. Oh, there's no questions. No, I think that's it. Any further questions? No. Okay. Well, thanks, Andrew. That's no, that was fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic story.